Welcome back to Chem 21, Preparation of Salicylic Acid. In this second video, we will focus on the reflux period and the isolation of the crude product. Here we see the reaction mixture right as it's coming to a very strong boil. You can see the bubbles forming on the boiling stones and you can see liquid collecting in the reflux condenser and dropping back down. The reflux condenser has quite a bit of liquid collecting fairly high and so we needed to turn the boiling rate down by removing the heat a little bit, putting it down to level 2. After 15 full minutes of refluxing, we began to dismantle the apparatus. As soon as the heat was turned off and this, the flask was cool enough to touch, it was removed and placed into a beaker so it wouldn't fall over. We were checking to see if it was cool enough to dismantle completely and eventually we were able to remove the flask carefully by unscrewing the cap and placing the flask into a beaker so it doesn't fall over and spill your product all over the bench top. Then we begin to remove the tubes from the condenser and if you're clever you can remove them over a sink and not get anything wet. Um, use gravity to try and figure out which one to remove first. At this point we were ready to neutralize this basic reaction mixture. So three milliliters of sulfuric acid, three molar, were obtained. In order to keep track, we placed this three molar sulfuric acid into a graduated cylinder, but we ended up using all three milliliters. The reaction mixture was carefully poured into a small beaker leaving behind the boiling stones but pouring out all of the liquid. If you're very careful you can do this. If you need to though you can remove the boiling stones with forceps or with two sticks used like chopsticks. So you can see the boiling stones remain behind stuck to the bottom and now we have our reaction mixture. Begin to add the sulfuric acid drop wise Originally, the mixture starts to look a little bit turbid and in the area where the sulfuric acid hits the solution, you see little bits of white precipitate coming out. When about half of it's added, we picked up the beaker, swirled it, and a lot of the precipitate dissolved again. So we continue to add more. That was my three milliliters the sulfuric acid and as you add more and more precipitate forms so you know you're not done yet. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does last a bit. Okay. Looks like it's very cloudy now, very lots of precipitate. One little last drop was added. No apparent additional precipitate forms, so we're finished adding the sulfuric acid at three milliliters exactly. In order to make sure that all of the solid has come out of solution, we place this mixture onto an ice bath for a few minutes. You can see the crystals are rather large and chunky. And then it's time to set up the vacuum filtration to collect the crude product. Here the crystals are sitting on the ice and we're setting up the vacuum filtration device with a Hirsch funnel. We add our vacuum tubing to the vacuum line and connect it to the vacuum flask while also attaching the vacuum flask with a clamp to the back of the hood. At this point, we can put our filter paper into the Hirsch funnel and we need to wet it slightly and 
suck a little bit of water through to hold the filter paper into place at the bottom. I want to block all the holes at the bottom of the, of the funnel. Then we pour our mixture in and let it start to filter out the liquid from the solid, collecting our product on the filter paper in the Hirsch funnel. You can see you can use a stirring rod or a rubber policeman or some device from your locker in order to get all of the liquid out. You can use small amounts of water to rinse out the flask where the crystallization took place. And there's still some more left in there. So we can start to scrape as best we can, possibly using just a little more water to get the remainder out. At this point, we let the air be pulled through by the vacuum through our crude crystals for several minutes until they're dry. Once they're dry, we can transfer them into our 10 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask where we will do our recrystallization in the next video. It's a tedious process to get all the crystals out and you also have to be careful not to shred your filter paper in the process. You don't want to put any filter paper in with the product because it'll mess up the recrystallization. So remove that filter paper, scrape as much off as you can, get as much out and transfer it all into that Erlenmeyer flask. Part that we saved for the melting point mm -hmm. or the part that's on my thumb <laughs> once you've got out as much as you can from the filter you should weigh it uh, the crude product in your Erlenmeyer flask we also took the empty Erlenmeyer flask mask previously this means you will be able to get the mass of the crude product by difference next we will recrystallize our crude product in the last video. Thanks for watching.